What is up, everyone? Very excited to talk to you today about the top 50 cards in my collection. But before we turn the camera around and start taking a look at what those top 50 cards are and what they are worth, I wanted to talk about a couple things with you all. The first was just the value of going through this process. In order to get ready for this video, I took pictures of every single card in my collection, I uploaded them to Card Ladder, and whatever was not being actively tracked on Card Ladder, I went through and priced myself. So the list that you're going to see today is a combination of the last sale or what I paid for it if it was low serial numbered stuff, but we're doing it from uh, the highest value to the lowest value in terms of the top 50. But what I had discovered when I was going through this process is that I've been picking up cards along the way that have appreciated pretty significantly that are no longer at like the core of what I want my PC to look like. So coming out of this exercise and coming out of this process, I'm really going to take another hard look at what I have in my collection to see what I can use to sell and work my way up into bigger cards that I've had on my watch list for, for some time now. I also want to give three big shout outs to JT, Triple Crown 24, Silver Jackify, and Baseball Collector. Those are the three channels that put these videos out before I decided to put mine out and they've inspired me to sort of go through this process and put my list together. They all have incredible collections. Uh, baseball collector specifically has one card, his number one card that's worth that worth more than my entire collection combined. Uh, so this is somewhat of a humbling process, but we are trying to go through and just take stock and take a snapshot and a glimpse of what our collection looks like at December 2020. Doing that will enable us to look back a year, two, three years from now and see where our collecting mindset was, what the market valued, and just sort of look at look back at this time as sort of like a home video for, for sports card collecting. Um, so I'm very excited to bring this to you today. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing for future content. And we're around the holiday season, so I hope everyone is staying happy, healthy, and safe. If you have a family, a friend, or a loved one that has been there for you, please make sure to reach out, make sure they aren't alone, and just say thank you. Pass along the positivity and the praise in the hobby and out. Let's flip the camera around and check out the top 50 cards of my collection in December 2020. All right. Before we jump in, I want to just share with you the cards that didn't quite make the cut. You have the 2018 Tops Series 1 Devers Gold Parallel, the 2010 Bowman Chrome Nolan Arenado Blue Refractor numbered out of 250, of course, you have your 2019 Top Series 2, Vladdy, no number, in an SGC 10. 2015 Tops, Chris Bryant, close up in a PSA 10. That is his rookie card. And then we have Zidano Chara's SP Authentic Future Watch rookie card. Any of these cards could easily crack the Top 50. They were right on the border, so I wanted to share them with you. But let us hop in and our first card is the 2019 Bowman Chrome Prospects Marco Luciano in an SGC 10. So you'll see a bunch of SGC cards in this top 50, and that's because I, like many of you, got caught up in the SGC submission craze back in April and May of 2020. Um, I think I was actually one of the first ones to submit some of this ultra modern Bowman stuff. Um, even today, you only see a handful of these cards being transacted. But speaking of SGC and Bowman, you're going to see this set in this series in this grade pop up a couple more times. At number 49, you have the 1991 Tops Chipper Jones. An iconic rookie card of 
a fan favorite Hall of Famer. This card saw some crazy spikes in the middle of the summer associated to The Last Dance, The Maguire, and the Sosa documentary. Um, I have it listed here for $65, but I think over the summer it was in the 120 to 150 range. So it's just crazy how volatile sports card prices can be. Number 49. Number 48 is another card from 2019 Bowman Chrome. You have the Julio Rodriguez in an SGC 10. Uh, J-Rod is, it depends on where you look, but he's either the number one or number two prospect in the Mariners farm system. Absolute stud at the plate. He's profiling to be a corner outfielder, but right now the, the Mariners farm system is an embarrassment of riches. At number 47, we have the 1955 Tops Harry Aganis in a PSA 5. Now, if you're not from the Boston area, you might not know who Harry Aganis is, but he is Boston University's greatest athlete. He was the first athlete at BU to be awarded the All-American Award. Um, he played football. He played baseball. He actually got drafted by the Cleveland Browns and decided instead to stick to his hometown and sign a deal with Tom Yockey and the Red Sox. Shortly after um, his first season, he passed away unexpectedly from a pulmonary embolism. Widely regarded as one of the, the greatest Boston sports tragedies of all time, but this was his rookie card. Happy to add it and keep it for the collection. Next up, we have a guaranteed, whoops, that would have been bad, guaranteed future Hall of Famer in 2001 tops each row. This is in a BGS 8.5, so it's definitely not the highest graded copy of this card, but uh, happy to have it in the collection nonetheless. This is a card that I picked up around two years ago when my dad and I went to Cooperstown. Um, at the time, I think I picked it up for 10 or $15. Now it is in the $65, $70 range. There's the subs if you're interested. But Ichiro stuff, long undervalued, saw a big price appreciation this year along with Albert Pujols. I think their stuff still has the room to grow. Um, so get it while you can. Next up, number 45. We have a set that you guys are probably getting tired of already, the 2019 Bowman Chrome. This is the Julio Rodriguez Mega Box version of the card in an SGC 10. Um, it'll be interesting when I go to sell this, uh, if anyone, or what the interest in the market will be. You don't see Mojo Refractors transacted very often in that SGC 10 grade. Next up at number 44, we have the 2019 Topps Chrome Cody Bellinger. Bellinger didn't have the greatest year this year, but um, I think he stands a good chance to come back in 2020. His shoulder is really hampering his potential power, so hopefully he had a nice long evenly paced recovery in the off season and he's able to return to the 2019 2018 2019 version of himself now our first hockey card makes its debut on the top 50 list this is the 2019 20 upper deck series one Cal McCarr UD canvas young guns card and if you aren't familiar with hockey, if we get in real close, you can see it's sort of a canvas print. It's like a, a different card stock that it's printed on. But Kale McCarr was the uh, Calder winner last year, the Rookie of the Year winner. My buddies and I went to see a bunch of UMass Amherst hockey games while he was there and quickly became a fan and started APC which moves us over to number 42. 
his regular Young Guns card. So, typically you'll see the, like, bigger name rookies snuck into Series 1 in a canvas version for their Young Guns, and then their actual Young Gun, their base Young Gun, slipped into Series 2 in order to drive interest in the product. Um, but his Young Gun stuff has been pretty consistently between $65, $70, dollars so far. So it'll be a little bit difficult to just keep adding Kale McCarr cards at the pace that I'm currently adding them at um, moving into the future. But really excited to see where the Colorado Avalanche are going. Very exciting young team. And then at number 41, we have Carlton Fisk's rookie card in a PSA 7. Now, the centering on this is not great. You can see sort of top to bottom, you got some centering issues there. But anytime you're able to add an iconic rookie card to your collection, you want to take that opportunity to do so and then look to upgrade the card in the future. Now at number 40, we're back with some hockey. This is the 2019 Upper Deck Ultimate Collection. This is the Kale McCarr Ultimate Access Jersey Autograph numbered out of 135. Just an absolute gorgeous card. I was angling to add his SP Authentic Future Watch Auto uh, for around what this would have cost, but I just really liked the picture selection. I thought the patch placement was really cool. It fits in naturally with the way the card is designed um, and was super happy to add it to the collection. So that's number 40. Number 39 is another Bowman card. This time it is a raw Bowman from 2016, Fernando Tatis Jr. This is his first Bowman Chrome. I actually picked this card up at a card show with Filmington in Cranston, Rhode Island. I think that was fall 2019 uh, for 30, 35 bucks. When he started taking off this year, like in the middle of the season and he was sort of the MVP favorite, this card took off with it. Absolutely skyrocketed. Happy to pick it up when I did uh, because I don't know if I would have added it at its current price point. At number 38, this is the first pack pulled card we have. It is the 2018 Tops Update Glaber Torres Salute Autograph. As you can see, it's a sticker auto. Um, I'm sure it would look great in a Yankees collection, a Yankees fans collection. So if you're a Yankees fan and you're interested in this card, hit me up. Um, Glaber didn't have the best year this year, but at least he's not the odd man out like Miguel Andahar over there. Um, so yeah, Glaber Torres at number 38. Number 37, we are back to the Bowman Chrome. 2019 Bowman Marco Luciano. You guys already saw this card in an SGC 10. Well, I also have it in a PSA 10. I actually have a couple copies of this. When I submitted this card to SGC, I also submitted about five cards to PSA. So I'm really big on Luciano. I think he's a stud. He's Lindor-esque. Um, and don't be afraid about the Giants if you're looking at what type of market these guys are playing in because Giants can still sell well. At number 36, it's another... San Francisco Giant, Buster Posey, the 2017 Clearly Authentic. This is the Rookie Reprint Auto numbered out of 45. This is the card that got me back into collecting. Absolutely love it. I'll try and link, remember to link uh, the video to where I explain how I got back into collecting. But this card, despite its price point or no matter its price point, will always remain in my collection. And at number 35, as you can probably tell, this is one of my favorite sets, 2019 Bowman, J-Rod, 
Again, you've seen this card before. This time it's in a PSA 10 versus an SGC 10 in the background over there. At number 34, we have another Yankee. 2017 tops Aaron Judge catching. Judge had a phenomenal start to the season, and you saw the prices on his card just start to cards start to skyrocket. This card at one point was trading around, I don't know, $150, $200. It's back down to $90, $95. Um, but I think it's still a big, big rookie card. So it's a very important card to the hobby, indicative of sort of the start of reinvigoration in the interest in sports cards. Next up, you have the 2018 Tops Glaber Torres horizontal short print in a PSA 9. This was part of 2018 Top Series 2. The... Ronald Acuna version of this card, the SP, goes for multiples of what this Glabor, Glaber sells for. At number 32, we have the 1983 Wade Boggs. Iconic design, Hall of Fame player. Nothing you can, nothing bad to really say about this card. Centering is solid, color really pops. No print defects or anything on the back. Just a great version and copy of this card. I had picked this up originally to complete the Red Sox all-time team set. Um, I've since sort of gotten away from collecting PSA set registries, but I think this card will remain in the collection. And then at number 31, we have 2016 Bowman. This is Dylan Carlson's base auto. I had traded this card for two of those cards, actually, two of the 2017 Topps Chrome Cody Bellingers back when they were, I don't know, $50 a piece. So all in, I'm about $115 in on this card here. Anytime you can add a first Bowman Chrome Auto of one of the top tier prospects, you got to be willing to gamble and take that risk. Moving into the top 30, you have the 2014 Topps Chrome Refractor Auto of Xander Bogarts. Bogarts is probably one of the most underrated players in baseball. It's numbered out of 199. This is just an absolutely beautiful version of this card, or absolutely beautiful card, period. Um, nice big bold auto. Not, no complaints. I think it's probably one of, if not my favorite, Red Sox auto, even though it comes in at number 30. Number 29 is another Red Sox, but this is when he was a Los Angeles Dodger, the 1992 Bowman Pedro Martinez in a PSA 10. Now, like all the late 80s, early 90s baseball cards this year, this 1992 Bowman saw an equally large bump. I think I picked this up for 20 or $30. Um, and now it's trading, selling around $105. Again, another pickup for the Red Sox all-time great PC. But that's not going to be going anywhere in the collection anytime soon. At number 28, we have a guy that will be appearing more times in my my top 50, but this is the Andrew Benintendi 2015 Bowman Chrome Draft Picks Refractor Auto in a BGS 9.510. You can see a little bit of the shine there. Um, Benintendi, when he came into the league, it was really him and Yoan Moncada as sort of the crown jewels of the Red Sox farm system. The Red Sox moved on from Moncada in order to bring sale over and kept Benintendi. Looks like Moncada is turning out to be the better player of the two. Who knows though? There might have been some injury nagging Benintendi for the last year or so. Hopefully he can turn it around for 2020. 2021, excuse me. 
At number 27, we have the 2018 Tops Update, Ronald Acuna. Now, this was the Chase card in addition to the Soto. I had a couple of raw copies on hand here that I decided to submit to SGC, and it turned out in my favor, SGC 10. At number 26, we have sort of a budget card. 2008, Allen and Ginter, Clayton Kershaw. This is his rookie card in a PSA 10. Now, if you're looking to pick up a Kershaw 2008 Tops update in a PSA 10, you're going to be paying close to, I think it's up to $700 or $800 now. Whereas you could get this card for... Oh, around 120. If you're a fan of Allen and Ginter, maybe that's an option for you. I picked it up when this card was, well, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. But I think the photography is good. I've always been a fan of Allen and Ginter. And that's coming in at number 26. Number 25, the 1989 Upper Deck Randy Johnson. This is his copy in a PSA 10. Again, big unit, big pitcher, big Hall of Famer. Iconic card the same year you had the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. It's probably the second biggest card in the set. Uh, but there's a big, big, big price differential between Randy Johnson and Ken Griffey Jr. Haven't quite added the Ken Griffey Jr. yet, but for now, we'll just uh, live with Randy. Now, at number 24 is the first of this Gypsy Queen bases around the league subset that you guys are going to see from me today, but it won't be the last. This is the Carlos Correa version, numbered out of 20. Just a really cool design. I'm going to be speaking a lot more about this card in particular, so I won't sort of belabor the point here. All right, at number 23, you have the 2016 Bowman Chrome Nolan Jones draft pick auto blue wave refractor numbered out of 150. Now, Nolan Jones is a power hitting corner outfield, I mean, corner infield stud. It's funny because you really haven't seen the market appreciation for Nolan Jones quite yet. Maybe it's because he hasn't really had a chance to prove himself at the upper levels of the minor league quite yet but I'm a sucker for your like corner infield power hitting third baseman and first baseman um, and saw this at a pretty good price and wanted to pick it up speaking of power hitting corner infielders you have the 2019 Bowman draft Andrew Vaughn this is just his base first Bowman Chrome Auto in a PSA 9. Picked it up off of someone on Blowout. It looks phenomenal. Phenomenal. I can't really see any issue with it. Uh, but behind Spencer Torkelson, Andrew Vaughn is a clear number two. We'll see if he ends up becoming an Adam Dunn type player in the MLB. Meaning... Very high power, lots of home runs, very low average with pretty poor fielding. Um, but just another great card and another card from 2019 Bowman in the collection. Now at 21, we have the 2013 Tops Update Christian Yelich in the Walmart Blue Border. This is a card I had picked up off of eBay. It looked like it was in fairly decent shape. These guys are really tough can, because of the chipping on the corners because of the blue border. Uh, you can see down in the bottom right hand corner here, there's some pretty significant whiting. But it's just, it's so, the pop is so much lower than just the normal base counterpart. Uh, so I was happy to pick that up, get it graded, keep it for the collection for a little while, and then see where that takes us. And at number 20, we have... Another Gypsy Queen bases around the league autograph. This time it's of Anthony Rizzo. This set was really one of the sets that got me 
back into collecting along with the Buster Posey, clearly authentic auto. Just something about sort of the high-end, low serial numbered chase really drew me into collecting again. So this Rizzo card is numbered out of 20. And the base here is actually a game used base from opening day in 2017. All right, moving inside our top 20, we have another Gypsy Queen bases around the league card. You guys can quickly start sensing a theme here. We have the Manny Machado version. This again is numbered out of 20. Very cool card, nice, bold, clean auto. At number 18, we have another 2019 Bowman, Wander Franco this time in a PSA 10. The consensus number one prospect in all of baseball. I was really surprised that the Tampa Bay Rays didn't bring him up for the playoff run. They're definitely trying to preserve a year of eligibility with him, which you really can't blame him for, but... I think he is a shoe-in to make his Major League debut in 2021. Now we have another hockey card coming up. This is the 2000, uh, 2003 SP Authentic Patrice Bergeron, numbered out of 900. This is his Future Watch Auto. If you're not a big hockey collector, uh, sort of the entryways and the gateway into hockey card collecting is... A player's young gun card and then their future watch auto from sp authentic so i've made it sort of a goal and a point of mine to pick up the young gun and the sp authentic future watch auto for all the big bruins players of sort of the last decade and was able to pick the bergeron up this year now at number 16 we have yet another gypsy queen bases around the league card this is the Paul Goldschmidt auto, numbered out of 20. So I'm very, very close to completing the full set of this insert run. Uh, the only one I'm missing is the Mike Trout card. At number 15 is a recent pickup and first basketball card of the list. The 2016 Panini Prism Jalen Brown Green Prism. Now, I talked a little bit about this on Instagram if you follow me over there, but I could not believe the disparity in the pop reports between the green prism and the silver prism. The green prism had a pop of 14 for the PSA 9 and 34 for the PSA 10 versus its silver counterpart, which had a pop of, I don't know, 35 for PSA 9 and then 200 plus for the PSA 10. The only difference is this card costs about a tenth of what the the Prism Silver costs. So if you're looking for a nice color match to add to the collection at a cheaper price point, check out Green Prism, especially if you are a Celtics fan. Now at number 14, I tried to drop some hints earlier about this card, but we have the 2018 Tops update, Juan Soto, and an SGC 10. So this card was submitted alongside the Acuna. It's currently selling for $185, $186, which is crazy that there's as big of a disparity between this card and the Acuna because forever they were neck and neck. But the market is telling us that Soto is more collectible. He's got a higher upside, so he comes in. At number 13, we have another Gypsy Queen bases around the league insert, and this is the Andrew Benintendi. I have this listed at $190 because I was the person that bought this card for $190, and it hasn't been transacted since then. If we look at the other bases around the league cards, there's probably a pretty strong chance that if I were to sell the Machado or sell the Rizzo or even the Paul Goldschmidt, they would sell stronger than this card. But like I said from the outset of the video, I'm trying to just plan out or measure the, the cards 
in my collection by their last sales price, even that if it was a comp that I set. At number 12, back to hockey, the 2013 tops, sorry, 2013 upper deck Young Guns of Patrice Bergeron. You hardly ever see this card come up for sale. I had kept my eye on this for a couple months before I ended up pulling the trigger. The people that end up selling this on eBay are often from Canada. So if you're looking to pick it up off of a Canadian seller, you usually need to pay an sort of upcharge on the shipping. Um, and that wasn't something that I was willing to do. But this card's in pretty good condition. The bottom right-hand corner is a little banged up, so I wouldn't send it in for grading. But like I said, I'm just trying to add a Young Gun and an SP Authentic Future Watch Auto to the collection. So Raw is just fine with me. At number 11, we have the 2015 Bowman Raphael Devers Chrome Prospect Auto Refractor. You can see some of that refractor shine numbered out of 499 this was actually the best card i ever got in a break uh, i bought into a random team mixer just happened to win a red Sox random team and then this what this card came out of like one of their repack products now the funny thing about this card is that devers has a first bowman chrome but he does not have an autograph on the card that has the first Bowman Chrome stamp. This is technically the first Bowman auto he has, but because the photo is different, they can't throw that first Bowman Chrome stamp on it. So I treat this as his first Bowman Chrome auto. And then you can see there it's numbered out of $4.99. All right, now we are officially into the top 10. I know what you guys are thinking. Jesus Christ, Chris, are these going to be all 2019 Bowman Chrome cards or all these bases around the league cards? And I will say, no, there's other stuff in here. Starting us out at number 10, 1960 Tops Carl Yaskremski in a PSA 5. This is a card, again, that I was adding for the Red Sox all-time set registry. Just an iconic rookie card. This is actually a pretty decent copy. Centering solid, corners are solid. You have a little bit of a print defect in the top left there, but it's definitely not a, a killer for me. At number eight, we have another all-time Red Sox great. 1997 Fleer, David Arias, David Ortiz in a PSA 10. So this is another card that has absolutely taken off. I picked this up for $105 and now it's selling for $280 to $300. But I think it's a cool looking card of probably one of the most important Boston athletes of my lifetime. So happy to add it and keep it in the collection. At number eight, you have the 2017 Bowman. Ronald Acuna. Again, this is just his base. This is a card that I picked up for $35 and it's currently selling for close to $300. Uh, the market just really decided they wanted to value the 2017 Bowman base in high grades this year. We'll see a similar trend with a player of sort of a similar caliber coming up soon. At number seven, we have Another Gypsy Queen, Bases Around the League insert. This is of Aaron Judge. I set the sort of price, the market price, on what I paid for it, $400. This is the third or second to last card that I needed for the set. Again, we're just looking out for the Mike Trout version. If you have a lead on where or who might own a copy of the Mike Trout, please, please let me know. Willing to pay a finder's fee. At number six, we have a card that I bought on pure speculation. This is the 2016 Bowman Chrome Black Auto Refractor numbered out of 75 of Dylan Carlson. This is a card that I will probably be looking to flip before the, the 
spring training starts. Carlson had a very disappointing 2020 campaign, but had sort of a scorching hit streak to close out the season. I'm hoping to ride that into recovering the money that I spent on it and with hopefully a little bit of a cushion and then swap that out for guys like Luciano and Torkelson and Andrew Vaughn that I'm a little bit higher on heading into 2021. At number five, we have the 1951 Bowman, Ted Williams in a PSA 6. I honestly thought that when I was putting this list together, this would be in the top three. This is the only Ted Williams card I have. Hopefully not for long. I also have my eye on the 1955 Wilson Franks uh, Ted Williams, but this is just a gorgeous copy. The top left edge is a little soft, but it presents really well. Happy to keep this in the collection. And then at number four, we have our last Gypsy Queen bases around the league insert. And this is of Chris Bryant. This auto is numbered out of 10. So that's why it's a little bit higher up the list than Aaron Judge. Chris Bryant did not have the best 2020 campaign. Hopefully he is able to turn it around. So we'll see. I think this card is awesome though. Take a look at that auto. Super, super clean on card. And one of the cornerstones of my collection. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the top three and starting us out in the top three. It's only fitting it's going to be a Bowman Chrome card. This is the 2016 Bowman Chrome Fernando Tatis Jr. in a PSA 10. You guys saw this card earlier in its raw version. It's currently trading at around $565 which is absolutely absurd to me. Back in July, I was telling people when this card was around $700 and $800 to sell, 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 buy it when the PSA pop reports go up for two to 300 bucks. And I didn't take my own advice, but I think I will try and sell and repurchase later on down the line um, before the season starts to try and lock in some of those profits. But just an absolutely beautiful card for going, going for a lot more than I would have expected. And at number two, this is my biggest pull, the 2019 Tops Triple Threads Mike Trout Jumbo Plus Relic Book numbered out of three. I was at the Shriners sort of biannual card show last year, and I was talking to B Roth six over there. Check him out over on Instagram at Card Soup. He's out doing great things in the hobby. But I was really looking forward to picking up a box of triple threads, but I couldn't pull the trigger at its price point. He convinced me to do it. I went home and I later ripped this open, ripped the box open, and found this guy sitting in there. I had no idea where to price it. I settled at around $700 because back in, I don't know, 2015 and 2016, the same copy of this book had sold for around that amount. Uh, but with what Trout's stuff has been doing and his continued dominance, it, I could see this going upwards of $1,000 if I were to sell it. My plan is to hold on to this until one of the trout bases around the league inserts pop up and then I'll try and sell that to raise some funds for the guy out and back. But that is my number two card. My number one card is only fitting a Red Sox and a Bowman Chrome Auto. This is your 2014 Bowman Mookie Betts Chrome Prospects Auto in a BGS 9.510 Auto. Picked this card up back in January 2020 for $450. This was prior to him getting traded to the Dodgers, prior to Gary V pumping Mookie Betts up, 
And prior to him almost winning his second MVP, I am super, super glad I picked it up when I did because it's currently sitting at around $1,000. And I don't think I would have been able to afford it at the current price point. Uh, but it's just a gorgeous card. Phenomenal signature. One of the best signature versions or one of the best signatures I've seen on this card out in the marketplace. Just really, really happy to have this as the number one card in my collection. I'm not going to lie, though. A couple weeks after this card came in, I quickly moved to, all right, now I want the refractor. Now I want the blue refractor. Oh, how sick would it be if I got a red refractor? Granted, those cards get very expensive very quickly. Um, so now I'm just going to be happy living with the gorgeous card that you see in front of me. So there you have it, the top 50 cards in my collection. Very interested to know what you think of the collection in the comments down below. I had a lot of fun putting this video together and I got a lot of information on where I want to bring my collection moving forward, what I want to change out, buy, sell, trade, etc, etc. Let me know how you are thinking about your collection sitting here December 2020 and what you are looking forward to adding in 2021. Very interested to see what you all think and say, but that's all I have for you today. Cardi C, we'll catch you guys later.